welcome to the All's Authors Podcast. We're so glad you found us. We're the global community of authors writing about Alzheimer's and dementia from personal experience to light the way for others. I'm Mary Ann Shuko, a registered nurse, author, and dementia daughter. And I'm Christy Byrne Yates, a licensed educational psychologist, dementia daughter, Al's author, and coach focused on the sandwich generation. Please join us for bi-weekly episodes with our authors as we talk about their dementia journeys, sharing intimate details and painfully obtained knowledge to help others currently on that path. We hope these stories offer you comfort and support as we strive to break the silence and stigma surrounding a dementia diagnosis. May one of our authors speak to your experience. This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. Hi, it's Mary Ann. November is both National Caregiver Appreciation Month and National Alzheimer's Month. In honor of these important recognitions, we have two gifts to offer you. The first is a limited number of audiobooks of our first anthology, Alzheimer's and Dementia Caregiving Stories. 58 authors share their inspiring personal experiences. This is a collection of the first year's posts on our blog, which will immerse you in a world of writing about Alzheimer's and dementia gathered by our management team who work tirelessly to find and vet resources, memoir, novels, nonfiction, poetry, children's books, blogs, and more to give those living with dementia a trusted place to find the support and knowledge they need. If audiobooks aren't your thing, the book is also available in ebook. To get your copy, email allsauthors at gmail.com. That's A L Z authors at gmail.com. We're also offering a free copy of our caregiver tip sheet 13 helpful tips for the long distance caregiver, compiled through my own personal experience. The link to download this helpful guide is in the show notes. As always, we thank you for supporting our podcast. Remember, you are not alone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this presentation of All's Authors Live. We're discussing the documentary film, Keys, Bags, Names, Words. And today is October 17th, 2023. I'm Marianne Shuko, a founder and manager of All's Authors, and we are the global community of authors writing about Alzheimer's and dementia from personal experience to light the way for others. Thank you for sharing your precious time with us. Please write your name and where you're from in the chat box, because we enjoy seeing which far-flung places our participants are zooming in from. I'd like to introduce some of the members of our team who are with us today. Christy Byrne Yates, author of Building a Legacy of Love, Thriving in the Sandwich Generation, based upon her caregiving journey with two parents with dementia. She is my podcast host, Uh, podcast co-host and producer and is helping me to host this event and also Vicki Tapia who is also a founder and author of Somebody Stole My Iron a family memoir of dementia sharing her story of also caring for two parents with dementia at the same time we're also here with two very special guests filmmaker Cynthia Stone who produced and directed Keys Bags Names Words and Caroline Priolo Priolo a content writer and designer from the University of California, San Francisco Memory and Aging Center and the Global Brain Health Institute. Her work inspired the creation of this film. Thank you so much 
Thank you so much. Here today. So the event is being recorded and everybody is muted until we um, do the discussion period. If you have something that you would like to say, you can raise your hand uh, or put it in the chat and we will be monitoring the chat. And we are recording so we can post this on our YouTube channel and produce it for our podcast called Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia. You can listen to the podcast on all the major podcast sites like Apple and Spotify and find it on our website at alsauthors.com. If you want to know when the replays become available, check your email because we'll um, make an announcement in our weekly newsletter. And if you don't see it, check your spam or email us at alsauthors at gb gmail.com and I think that's it so let's get started um, I expect that most of us have already viewed the film because unfortunately due to like technicalities we weren't able to have a screening where we could all watch it together so I had some questions that I had prepared for Cynthia and Caroline and um the film debuted in September, and I just wanted to ask you, what has been the response thus far? Uh, this is Cynthia, I'm the producer and director of the film, and I'm really sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties here, so you can't uh, see my picture, but I'm thrilled to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, we premiered the film, well, first in Dublin uh, last March, and then the US premiere was in San Francisco, and. Uh, there's just been a tremendous response. We had a sold out crowd and a really great discussion afterwards with uh, myself and Caroline and and uh, Dr. Bruce Miller, uh, a renowned uh, neuroscientist and uh, some people with a li lived experience. And it was just a really beautiful uh, and meaningful night. And since then, Caroline, maybe you have a more up to date um, uh, accounting, but it's been shown in uh, 28 countries, about 105 uh, different screenings so far, and we're just starting. And so um, we hope that uh, as we uh, go forward, we might be able to cut it down for PBS. And and uh, we hope these uh, community screenings will continue and it will just uh, grow and grow because we'd love the film to be a tool to get people connected to resources and start a conversation. So uh, we're really thrilled to be here today. Yeah, this is Caroline Prelos. I'm a additional producer, but mostly I launched the, um, I was a co-founder of the Hearsay Oral History Program, which this hearing the stories of lived experience from firsthand people was what got this whole ball rolling. And so I've been very involved with the film and Cynthia's great work. So thank you everyone for being here today and for watching the film. I hope I hope it had an impact on you. But I will say one of our goals was so many films that are out about Alzheimer's and dementia are so depressing and heavy. And we didn't want to ignore that. It's, it is a challenging and difficult disease and topic and causes people a lot of stress and work. But we also wanted to show that there are moments of beauty, that there were moments you can connect with someone. There is there are things you can do to help and, you know, uh, maybe prevent or at least delay onset and, you know, things that you can do to take care of yourself and encourage brain health. And so what we were really excited when we showed it to a lot of people was hearing, oh, I never knew that was possible. Or I love to see how, you know, changing the environment leads to changes in, you know, behavior and things like that. And so that's what we really hope and have been gratified to see that, People are saying, oh, this gives me ideas. Uh, this is a way I can take care of myself. I can take care of my loved ones. And, you know, that's what we're really hoping that people find a way to connect and have a tool and some hope to, you know, move forward in the best way possible. Yeah, it's, it certainly is an all encompassing film that covers so many different areas related to dementia, uh, the prevention, the science behind it, the, um, strategies for behaviors and managing some some aspects of of the condition which may be challenging and disruptive so i thought you know all of that was really terrific and i was wondering has dementia had a personal impact on either of your lives um i can go first i, I it hadn't when i started the film but about in the middle of the film uh, my mother developed de dementia and i was filming in Brazil 
uh, when my husband called uh, in the middle of the night and said, Cynthia, I think mom's forgetting to eat. And uh, so uh, when I came home, um, she she did quite quickly, we think with vascular dementia, uh, start losing memory. And, and I think the film, everything I learned from the people in the film, all the strategies, uh, everything like that Dana Walrath says about being, um, you know, not pulling people back into our world, but going where they go. And it just helps me be with her without fear and to really connect with her in beautiful ways. Not that it wasn't extreme, like excruciating, of course, as everyone who's experienced this knows, but I was able to have those, you know, joyful moments with her and uh, just really be in the present with her during that, during that period. And say a similar story um other than my grandmother had sort of i would say an undiagnosed you know memory problems or such um but i'm looking back in hindsight it was probably most likely alzheimer's um and it looks like my father has it now so so again started the film with just working in the field but it has become personal and for me again similar to cynthia it's looking at I me mean, i also work with some amazing people so i learned from them but what the film captures is again, these behavioral changes. And when there is a behavior you don't like or something like that, you sort of look to the environment like, Oh, okay, well, what is he trying to tell me? What is, what are, what needs are we not meeting? Or, you know, how is he frustrated and how can I address instead of getting mad or upset, how can I address this in a way that helps him and, and solves the behavior so that things move forward and we have more positive times together. So, yeah. So it definitely been personally touched and, using a lot of the same strategies in my own life. Yeah, you, um, your goal was to create shifts. They were like in many different areas that you wanted to change a shift in people's way of thinking about these conditions. And um, can you talk a little bit more about that, about, about your goals in, in those directions? Caroline, you want to take that? Um, sort of what we've said, I would say that instead of sort of I mean, as I said, we don't want to lessen this seriousness of the disease and the difficulty and the challenges. So we're in, in no ways trying to be, you know, Pollyanna about it. But one of that shift to realize, OK, there are moments you can connect and there is still the person is still there. They may be having difficulty communicating, behaving, following what we consider, you know, normal, typical behavior. But they're still there and you can still work with them. You just you might have to struggle a little more to find a way to reach people. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was, I think, really our goals was, you know, how can we create that shift to instead of being irritated or annoyed? OK, if you need to be mad at something, be mad at the disease, but not the person. And how can you how can you shift to figuring out what are they trying to tell me? What is this behavior is a communication? How can I understand what they're trying to tell me and shift what I'm doing to help them live their best life and to have the best relationship with them for as long as you have? Right. I like that. I, I also love what something uh, Dana Walrath, the artist and anthropologist in the film, said to me once. She said, you know, I had to let go of those labels of I'm the daughter. You know, if you could just be with someone in the present and not get so wrapped up in the label, that to me was very helpful. And also a shift in how we look at our own brain health, this whole uh, thought about prevention and how we can, we really can be active in trying to maintain our own brain health through kind of, um, you know, modified behavioral uh, approaches. Mm -hmm. And I'll chime in. Factors. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, chime in on that. Uh, Caitlin Casaletto, a um, PhD researcher at UCSF Memory and Aging Center, uh, I forget what year the paper came out. It's within the last two or three years, but um, had a great paper that even people with a genetic um, a mutation, well, I don't want to use mutation, but a, a, a genetic predisposition to get um, frontal temporal dementia, they were able to delay the onset of symptoms and do better through modified lifestyle changes like getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise, eating well, managing stress, managing diabetes, uh, managing depression, things like that, doing the things that take care of your health, even if you have a genetic, you know, determination to get the disease, even that is helpful. So you may not be able to avoid it entirely, but if you can put it off for five or 10 years, that makes a big difference, you know? 
And so yeah. that's what, yeah, really helping people can shift their behavior now to make the change to behaviors that help you and take care of your brain. Yeah. And I think another great shift was um, getting away from our drug obsessed culture and thinking that there would be a magic pill or there isn't some magic pill yet um, waiting for us to try to reverse this or cure this. And knowing mm-hmm. that um, there are other mechanisms that can be used uh, that don't require anybody's intervention. You don't need a physician. You don't need a prescription. You don't need your insurance company to pay for a lot of these strategies and, and things that we can use that help. I think that empowers people. Yeah, that's a good point. And, yeah. and maybe it at least, maybe you do still need a drug, but maybe you can use less of it or something. You know, there might right. be a, there's things to try first and at least see if that right. solves the problem. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody's waiting, you know, for these magic pills and and when they come out and then they get used for a while, they turn out to be disappointing in many cases. And so we kind of need to get beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to look for other solutions. So how long did it take to create this film? I think we're on, we're like at three and a half years, would you say, Caroline? And uh I, I kind of felt a little bit embarrassed by that. And then a friend, a filmmaker friend was over the other night and she said, oh my God, I've been working on a film for 12 years. So that made me feel better. But um, it was a film with a lot of breath. It's such a global problem. We wanted to make sure to show that aspect. And um, yeah, and so we're just really thrilled with it. And it's been such a worthwhile endeavor. I really, to me personally, it's like a gift again for everything I learned and the association with the Global Brain Health Institute and Caroline to be able to, um, to learn enough to be with my mother. So, yeah, it was. And I will say also COVID jumped in the middle of there. So there's about a year that we didn't film because we weren't quite sure of, can we be in a room together? <laughs> That's true. That is true. There were some other wrinkles and we spent some time in the beginning, which, you know, we, we met all these Atlantic fellows who are doing just this amazing, really diverse work on addressing different elements. Some of it is drug research and better diagnosis and better ma- management in a clinical setting, but a lot of it is creative and exercise or artistic or emotional responses. So we had all these people doing amazing work and we knew it was great we wanted to share it and it was just sort of like okay what do we you know we have gosh there's about uh, 600 fellows now internationally so like how are we going to tell the story with this many people so it took a little while to sort of listen to everybody here who was doing what how were we going to highlight some of this and you know how could how could we visually tell the story and help people connect to you know these you know hopeful directions yeah we did spend a lot of time doing that and going over to Ireland and just meeting people. And uh, in addition to here in the, in the United States and yeah, taking a lot of time to listen to what uh, the people who were working in the field had to say in terms of what they wanted to see in the documentary, what they wanted to co- to accomplish. And we were, you know, in talking to the fellows, we were just, um, you know, getting a lot of the, answers we expected like just how difficult it is and uh, traumatizing and heartbreaking and and then we started getting for me maybe not for you caroline but for me what were surprising answers of that the joy that the moments of joy the moments of magic that happened and that was really uh surprising and also wanting to focus on hope so uh that was the challenge how do you you combine those two you have good information for people uh to present how it really is for families and people going through this to to give a sense of how difficult it is but then also to weave in that those themes of of joy and and magic and hope um so that that took some time to figure out. Mm. And it was really credit with finding that thread. (laughs) Yes. I think it was also very hopeful seeing how much work is being done in the different people around the world who are involved and engaged and committed to, to doing this, to finding the answers. Sometimes I think people don't realize what is going on out there, the help that's trying, they're trying. 
and that it's so much bigger than just, I mean, the laboratories are great. They're full steam ahead, but it's so much bigger than the laboratories. It's health policy, it's arts, it's behavior, it's nursing, it's social work, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's everything. It's tremendous. So um, I think you said a little bit at the uh, earlier about um, what you hope, you know, happens in the future for the documentary. I was thinking it would be great if it were something people, people could purchase to have permanently in their library at some point, like a, a, a DVD or some place to stream it. Um, because I think it's something you need to see again and again and to refresh your, your memories. And, and as you go along on your journey and things are evolving, you might get something else out of it the next time you view it. So um, do we have any plans for anything like that? Right. We, uh, we do have an educational distributor that's interested and we're pursuing things like video on demand. And mm -hmm. we've really just started our distribution in uh, through community engagement uh, um, in the fall. And so we just hope that keeps expanding. And we, our goal is to get, you know, make it available to as many people as possible. So I do hope that's the case. I don't know, Caroline, if you wanted to add anything to that. Exactly that. I mean, our goal is that, well, thank you for your kind words. And the goal is hopefully that more people can see it and hopefully find some help and guidance in it and run with it in their own direction. But groups like this are fantastic where people can get together, see it, talk about it, think about how it relates to their own lives, what shifts they might make in their own lives for both their own health, as well as maybe friends, family, other people who are experiencing dementia, what they can do to help them. So, Right. We had... Um... And I believe they're they're in the audience, a family in the UK who wrote to me and asked if she could have the link to share the film with her extended family. It was she and her husband had watched it and and they got so much out of it. They wanted to share it with everybody. So we you know, I told them how to access it for everyone because the link was open to everybody who came to our you know event. And um, I can just see where it would just be something that would spin and keep spinning off and in, into different family members and organizations. It has so much value. Yeah, we hope that's the case. And thank you. I um, One thing people can do if they're interested in hosting a screening, you know, can be as, you know, just a family who wants to see it. Or uh, we've had some people partner with you know, a local organization, uh, AARP, local AARP, to uh, rent out a, a theater. You don't actually rent the theater. You just sometimes theaters on a weeknight, you know, will, if you guarantee them 30 tickets, uh, then they'll uh, not charge for the actual theater to screen it and we can provide the film. So, you know, if you go to the website and just click on host a screening, you can find out more about that and as little or as big as you want to go, you know, we just would like to make it available to as many folks as possible and it's just keys bags names words dot com and then just click on host the screening and that gets you connected with our community engagement folks who can uh, help you through the process yeah i am uh, hosting a live uh, a live screening at my college where i work i'm a college nurse this is next week it's going to be in uh, in new york upstate new york yeah. and it's really easy to get um, what I needed to do that at, at the school and the local Alzheimer's Association has partnered. So, uh, and anybody in the audience, if you're thinking, gee, I really like to show this to my community or to the members of my support group, my care home, whoever you think can benefit, it, it's not difficult. You can do it. And, um, and there was no charge to do it was what for September and October. So mm -hmm. that was, um, uh, that was really terrific. So I'm excited about that. Great. And yeah, maybe talk to your local library. If, you know, if you're interested in hosting one, there's lots of free venues that could be supportive and will be supportive. Don't let money be a barrier or money or language be a barrier. We'll, we'll find ways to make it happen. I want to um, thank you, Caroline. She uh, posted in the chat, so you can see there, she did give a link to the website. So if people want more information, you can go there directly if you haven't already. Um, Marianne, there was a great question in the chat. Can I go ahead and read that and see yeah, how? Please. Okay, so this is from Mary. 
um, Crescenjo. I think I said that wrong, but Mary, thank you for your question. Um, was there one team who recorded the various groups of people so many years before, specifically for this film? For example, the young boy in real time at Congress and later his work as an adult? That's a great question. Yeah, great question. So um, the this is Walt Dawson, who uh, incredibly at 10 years old, uh, wrote 500 letters to different folks and ended up testifying before Congress about his family. Uh, his father had dementia, uh, if you hadn't seen the film yet. And um, so that was actually once once Walt uh, had his letter read on NPR or he he read his letter on NPR. Things kind of ballooned, as you see in the film. And um, so CBS, NBC, all these people covered Walt uh, Dawson and also Helen Roach for Brennan, the advocate, RTE, uh, the public station in uh, Ireland, uh, also uh, was covered in her um, at advocacy work. So the, you just, you, we contacted the television stations who shot that footage in our case, um, Viacom and CBS, and you purchased the rights to, uh, to show, um, that footage. So, hmm. Uh, everything else uh, in the film we filmed, uh, and though we did have a few crews in Jamaica, for instance, uh, there was a crew that filmed for another uh, Global Brain Health Institute project, and they shared some film f footage with us, and a few fellows shared some footage from uh, the Ibasho program uh, in Nepal and Japan, but everything else in, in the UK and Wales and Ireland and here in the States uh, and in Brazil, uh, our crew shot. That's, that's fascinating. Thank uh -huh. you. Sure. Yeah. We really appreciated having all that footage to work with. It was really wonderful. Yeah. I was wonder wondering the same thing because, you know, obviously it was a child. Right. And, you know, just starting it, you know, the, the documentary opens with his story and, you know, you don't even think that a child that young is dealing with something like that with a parent. And it's just mm -hmm. an eye opener. And yeah. He's still dealing with it with his brother and his, his half brother yeah. and his half sister. So as he said, the story's not done yet. Nice yeah. goes on. It's just tremendous. And he's so committed to the work too, because he could have went in the other direction as well. You know, exactly. You could want to run away from it, but he's right in there uh, doing uh, public policy advocacy to this day. And he's, I won't give away his age. I'm not even sure, but uh, maybe in his forties. Uh, so um, very impressive. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It defines his life. Yes, that's correct. And that's true of many people that are in our organization who, um, have been through the dementia journey and committed themselves to sharing what they've learned and then helping other people. We have a very strong core of people who are committed in that way. So it does, it is a, just something that changes your life. Yes, it's really admirable to stay in it and, and keep giving back. Um, Jill Harmon, who is in the film, caring for her husband, Don, mm. she's, she's felt the same way that she really wants to stay involved and help others who are maybe at the beginning of the journey that uh, that she went through. So, yeah, I really I so admire and, and appreciate that. Well, yeah, people... So really awesome. Go I was going to say, we also have an advisory committee that consults to the Memory and Aging Center made up of caregivers, mm -hmm. current and past. And I will say that the care partners are some of the most amazing people I've met who just have a wealth of knowledge and a passion to share mm -hmm. and make a difference. And Jill is a perfect embodiment of that. And there are many more Jills out there that are, you know, we were lucky to come into contact with. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just what I call hard earned knowledge. And, you know, you, you have it and you need to put it somewhere. And that's what it's like so many of the authors who've written books in our collection. That was their impetus. They they just had to take it and put it somewhere for somebody else, not just bottle it up inside or put it aside where it wouldn't help anyone. That's such uh, so altruistic. Did we have any other yeah. questions, Christy, in the chat? 
I don't see any other questions. Mary did want to say thank you for the reply to the question. Um, and she says, this is a profound, informative, and beautifully filmed and produced film. You should be up for a documentary Oscar. Best wishes. So, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mary. Um, I don't see any other questions, to, but really want to open that up. And if you'd like to raise your hand and unmute yourself and um, ask it live, you can do that rather than typing. That's fine, too. So Mary uh, Crescenzo is one of the all's authors. Her book is um, Planet Alzheimer's, and she's engaged in using the arts to uh, help people communicate with dementia. So well, thank you for your work, Mary. So important. What? So could I ask a question? So what is Mary finding with uh, with art? What, how is that? Uh, what she finding is making a difference. Yeah, Mary, go ahead and unmute. Yeah. May I unmute? Okay, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, well, I've been using art for about 30 years and uh, taking a multidisciplinary approach of art. And so many things you said in the film resonate with the work that I've done. And it's thrilling to see other people and all over the world uh, recognizing the need for person-based care using creativity and the arts. Um, so my husband watched it with me last night. I watched it last week. And um, yeah, it that's what it's about, you know, meeting people where they are. Uh, creativity is an innate um, spirit that we have. And uh, yeah, so it's it's amazing. It constantly amazes me how um, connection and communication can happen if you meet the people where they are. And again, your film was just um, just so wonderful and right on. And he, my husband enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, beautiful balance of uh, information. So thank you again. Thank you, Mary. That's so kind. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your work. Thanks for your work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, Herda Saunders has a comment. So would you like to unmute yourself, Herda, and share your comment with us? Okay. I, I just wanted to congratulate um, Cynthia and Caroline and probably the other people who were involved uh, because this is probably one of the best dementia films I've ever seen. And um, it strikes a very good balance between um, the, the hope in how many amazing people there are who are working on this and um, the, the showing of beautiful, um, joyous moments that can still be had. And uh, then also showing the difficulty of people who, who live with dementia and particularly those who care for them. Thank you so Thank much. You. Really so appreciate that. And then and do you have a personal relationship to dementia? Did you have someone in your life who you cared for? Or? Yes, I have vascular dementia. And... Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed 11 years ago now mm. and um, had to take early retirement um, from my job at the University of Utah um, in that gender studies program. And I have um, been, been an advocate uh, for people with dementia because I'm very lucky and both um, lucky and um, the, what's the opposite of lucky. Um, uh, anyway, that my talking and thinking is still working on good days, mm -hmm. um, but my ability to live in the world is really uh, messed up. And so my husband uh, takes care of me. I cannot tell you how many things he's already done for me this morning. Uh, to just enable me to um, be up and about and uh, be, being able to um, uh, uh, 
participate in this. So I just want to say thank you very, very much uh, for doing this. And uh, it's a film that deserves to be very widely distributed. Gerda, thank, thank you, you for being so much. Thank you, Herda. Yeah. I just want to mention that Herda is one of our authors. She's the author of her, her memoir, Memories Last Breath. And she's also the subject of a PBS documentary, uh, PBS Utah documentary called The Herda That Remains, which is lovely, absolutely lovely. I'm really going to look for those. And thank you so much mm. uh, for for letting us know and sharing your story. Herda, I wish you so much uh, happiness. Thank you so much. And I just have to say, um, making your film in, what was it, three years, was mm -hmm. actually lightning speed, I think. <laughs> um, I a, a film team followed me for six years. Uh, so mm -hmm. I I cannot even imagine the <laughs> strings you had to pull to make all that happen mm -hmm. uh, and all the, the other footage that you mentioned. So you, thank you so much. And I'll, yeah. yeah. Can you repeat the name of the documentary so I can? I can. I can put it in the comments if you would. If, that would be helpful, that. if you have yeah. access to it. Thank okay, you. I'll do it right now then. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank you so yeah. much, Herda. Yeah. Great yeah, glasses, awesome. Herda. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah, very nice. So stylish. Yeah, how important and valuable it is to hear your story, the firsthand stories of living with diagnosis and such there's so much fear and stigma around dementia that in the, we don't meet people who are living with it and as you said it's complicated it's challenging but yet from my view you seem to be doing extraordinarily well and so yeah. Yeah. that's wonderful it's wonderful for people to see that like okay you can talk to people you can connect you can you can form friendships and you know you can be with people yes you don't have to put them away you mm -hmm. know Heather is one of the authors in our uh program next week called everything you've always wanted to know about living with dementia but we're afraid to ask and it features five of our authors all living with dementia some for more than 10 years um for the second time actually the third time but it's our second time getting together because we did it two years ago and we wanted to catch up so there are now there will be five sharing their stories and strategies to live well with dementia. And if anybody would like to join us, you can get the link on our website where you can sign up. Oh, I'd definitely like to join you if I can. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty, they're a pretty amazing group of people. Yeah, that's not it. So Marianne, I wanna share a comment and it looks like we have another person who would like to comment, but uh, a comment from Julie. Um, she says, I am the author of uh, the Phoenix Man about my late spouse, Scott. What I took from the movie is that teaching those who treat people with dementia would benefit from this movie, such as doctors, CNAs, nurses, physical therapists, physical therapists, etc. I couldn't agree more, I think, as a film to talk to people about um, how we care for people is very important. Um, so thank you for that comment. Um, Ron Cooper, did you want to sh ask a question or have a comment? You go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. Thank you, Christy. Um, I want to extend uh, my deep uh, gratitude to uh, both Cynthia and Caroline and all of your peers and, and fellows who, who uh, made this possible. Um, Sunday afternoon, I watched the movie, uh, and it brought me to tears. Uh, I have my mother, Frances Cooper, passed away in 2009 with Alzheimer's after approximately a 10-year journey. Uh, myself and my three sisters uh, and my dad, while he was alive, uh, were caregivers along with an extended family. Uh, I thought that maybe I had put this behind me, uh, although your, your movie proved otherwise to me. It rekindled in me uh, a lot of emotions, and if I may, I'd like to describe your film as um, the uh, poetry in emotion, mm -hmm. as opposed to poetry in motion. 
<laughs> because of the content you presented, uh, the Welsh playwright um, was extremely moving. I believe you threw your the name of the film from from that uh, uh, some of some of the interviews there yes. with um, the Alzheimer's um, people living with Alzheimer's and the care partners who were part of that effort. Uh, there were so many gems. Uh, it sparkled throughout with, as you said, magic, joy, and hope. And I just want to say that for me, and perhaps for others who are here today and will watch the movie in the future, is that I've rededicated myself to my mother's memory to keep it alive so that it, by it, uh, by, you know, because it deserves to be, but also for others who are traveling a similar journey. And so maybe I can be a, a little better advocate now with, with the help of your movie and excellent work. Please have it screened hundreds, if not thousands of times. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. The very kind comments. It sounds like your mother was a wonderful person and, uh, and so it's, it means a lot what you said. And uh, thank, you. thank you. So you raised a good son, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ron's book thank is you, called Ron. Fran's Song. Fran's Song. Is that your mom's name, Fran? Yes, that's right. Francis Eisler Cooper. <laughs> nice. um, passed away in uh, October of this month, is her uh, in 2009. And uh, she was 86, I believe, born in 23. Wow. Dad, dad had passed away in February of that year um, with a uh, massive stroke. So we lost both of them that same year. Mm -hmm. And uh, dad and mom, Harry and Fran, uh, mm -hmm. we, that September of that year, a month before mother passed, we went to the Alzheimer's association fundraiser uh and uh we carried a sign with dad and mom's uh name on it and in a picture of them uh, for all all others to see and i think we raised eight hundred dollars that year <laughs> oh nice good for so, you that's great thank you thank you thank you thank you ron and I want to note in the chat, Herta has put in her um, the link to her uh, PBS documentary and also her website blog. So you can catch that there and bookmark it. Thank you. Thanks, Herta. Oh, oh Herta, yeah, unmute. Help. Jump in. I just want to comment on the people who take care of um, this um, uh, Clara, no, no, sorry, what is her name? Jill, Jill Harmon, I wrote this down, um, who looks after her husband, Dan, um, mm -hmm. who's in a wheelchair and uncommunicative. And, and I just want to say that she, for me, stands for the absolute honor and dignity of people who, who take care of people with dementia. Um, and I myself have asked my family not to take, take care of me indefinitely, but there will be a point when when I would want them to stop caring for me. Um, but I, I, I just want to say that uh, to me, such devotion is it's just holy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that, um, the, the, what, what's always so amazing is that how, um, what, how Jill communicated with, with Don when she, when she was taking his hands and sort of speaking, um, you know, just speaking at their, their moment and said that, you hold you squeezing my hands because you love me. Mm -hmm. And it was utterly clear that that he 
uh, heard that and agreed with it. And that's when he said the word actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, just, it's just such a stunning moment. And I um, I just wanted to say I'm so glad that you captured it. But I don't think anybody can understand the, um, the stresses and the anxiety and the physical hard labor that she does. Um, um, and uh, you were saying, I think one of the filmmakers was saying that, you know, um, that we don't have to be slaves of the the drug culture. You know, we don't have to wait for them to invent the drug. Um, and there are things we can do ourselves. But I just want to say one thing that a larger organization than, you know, individual people, I mean, like the, the global uh, movement, for example, but something I do think the, um, like a city or a state or the whole country needs to be involved because who pays for caregivers for people you know, who don't have a house, um, who don't have a supportive caregiver, caretaker, They're, those people walk outside our apartment and sleep there, um, you know, in the summer, camp out. And it's utterly clear to me that many of them have serious um, mental disorder. So I just wanted to to add that um, as as something that I think I am not uh, able really to do um, advocacy on that scale of, of, uh, you know, to to communicate with this city or the state, although I, I did at some time do that. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who does. And things like this movie will help too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Herda. No. Um, any co- comments or response? I have another comment, but go ahead. I could say to that, um, actually UCSF does have a, a clinic that we actually the neurologists go and treat a lot of the homeless people in San Francisco. Um, many of the people in San Francisco, at least the data that we see, are homeless for the first time after age 50. And that's just gut-wrenching, um, A, that they're even homeless. But it shows that you know they've had a productive, they've had a job, they've had families, they've had homes, and something happened. And they're at every risk for not good brain health. Sorry, there's a better way to phrase that. But every everything they're living is not helping their brain health or their longevity. And so right now we're observing a lot and we're just trying to figure out how do we create a net to catch some of these people and give them some of the the care and the benefits they need to to live as best they can. I mean, UCSS approach is housing first. If we can solve that, then hopefully we can address other issues. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a gut-wrenching position. Mm. Yeah, and that's why policy is so important and is emphasized uh, in the at the Global Brain Health Institute in terms of, um, you know, treatments are great if we can get them, and but to move legislation so we can get more supports for families and people who uh, have dementia, um, so vital. So thanks for that comment, Herda. Thank you. So I'm going to invite um, the Town Square Adult Day Enrichment Center to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Or So I'm going to go. come up with a different name. I'm sorry. Um, I can change that. We're on two here. We had a problem with our technology as well. So we've got your sound on a laptop, but we're sitting in a large room with um, some family members here at Town Square Adult Day Enrichment Center. And I just wanted to share with you that this film was so incredibly touching in so many ways. Um, I loved the idea that we were connected to a global community 
And we, we saw a bigger picture of not only the research, but the challenges and the struggles that happen. I think the, the biggest impact for me was the positivity and the hope that comes from this. And I do so want to comment on that and how much it is appreciated because I think that is the biggest fear for the caregivers. Um, the primary family caregivers that we deal with here. The other part for us was that it was so affirming um, in the work that we do every day here in our adult daycare centers to make that connection and have that community because we witness all the time exactly what you're talking about in helping people find a sense of purpose and connection and community with one another and being surprised every day by those amazing moments that come out of uh, left field and you never expect to see, but we we experience joy every day from it. So huge applause to you for this incredible endeavor. And I can't wait for it to have a larger audience. Well, thank you so much for the work you do. It's so important really to, um, I think there are some care situations where people don't really approach it that way. And uh, so to have, care homes that really look uh, so closely at the individual and really think about what they need, what will help them. And, uh, and for each person is just so valuable, valuable in this uh, with this disease. So I'm so glad to hear it. And thank you. And may you keep finding joy every day. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Linda. Um, I just want to say that many, many people from the town square adult enrichment center had um, signed on for this event. And um, where are you guys from? So we're sitting in Princeton, New Jersey right now. Okay. Um, we have three centers here in central Jersey, one in Princeton, one at the Jersey shore in brick, New Jersey. And we're mm -hmm. just about to open a third center in Marlton, New Jersey. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank for, you. for being here. Yeah. We appreciate the opportunity. Oh, for sure. So we have a lot of events. So now, now we've got your uh, contact info. So you'll be invited to all of them. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So did we have anybody else with a comment or a question for the filmmakers? Are we getting close to our time? Yeah. That'll be wrap it up, I suppose. I just want to say thank you for attending this All's Authors Live event. And I did mention that we would love to see you at our next event, which is on Tuesday, October 24th. We're at 1030 a.m. Eastern because three of our authors are in England. And there are five of them all currently living well with dementia who will share their stories and strategies, including Hera. Everything you've always wanted to know about living with dementia, but we're afraid to ask part two. And you can register for the event as soon as you go onto our website on the homepage at alzauthors.com. You will see um, at the top where you can click to get the information about the event and also sign up to get the link. And our details for all our events are posted on our website and emailed to our followers. So you can be among the first to know everything new at All's Authors as a subscriber to our weekly newsletter. Sign up at allsauthors.com and check your inbox each week for our news, introducing our latest author. There's a new author every other week and interspersed with a podcast, special events and more. And be sure to visit our blog. We've got um, over 350 authors posting about their personal dementia journeys and their books, our podcast, which is approaching 100 episodes. We have a bookstore. We have all the books categorized to make it easy for you to find exactly what you need, depending on your situation. And we also have a little shop for All's Author Swag. And you can follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, where we share a wealth of resources for your dementia journey. And remember, you are not alone. One can sing a lonely song, but we chose to form a choir and create harmony. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you to our filmmakers, Cynthia and Caroline, for their remarkable thank film. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Hi. 
I'm Anne of All's Authors. When I was caring for my mother with dementia, I searched long and hard for memoirs and personal stories about other caregivers' experiences. I wanted to know not just how other people survived, but how they thrived. Unfortunately, at the time, there was not much available. That's why we created the bookstore at allsauthors.com. Now, busy caregivers can easily browse for just the right resource to guide them on their journey. Books are categorized by relationship and type of dementia, as well as genre. You'll find a helpful title in just minutes using our search tool. So, after the podcast, take a few moments to visit our bookstore at allsauthors.com slash bookstore. Remember, you are not alone. Thank you for listening to Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia, and All's Authors podcast. For more details on this episode, please see the show notes. If you enjoyed the podcast, please leave a review and subscribe to it on whichever platform you use to listen to your favorite podcasts. For more information on All's Authors, please visit allsauthors.com. While you're there, be sure to browse our online bookstore, where you will find hundreds of carefully vetted books on Alzheimer's and dementia. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Please email your thoughts on the podcast to allsauthors at gmail.com. We are a 501c3 charitable organization, totally reliant on donations to do what we do. If our author's stories move you, please consider contributing to our cause. Remember, you are not alone. One can sing a lonely song, but we chose to form a choir and create harmony.